The Storyteller presents Sleeping Beauty. Once there lived a young, handsome king and his beautiful queen. They loved each other very much, but they had no children. They were sorry about this because they so much wanted a child of their own. The queen liked to walk in the cool forest by the waterfall and pray for a little baby. One day, a little fish popped its head out of the water and piped. Your Majesty, your prayers have been answered. Very soon you shall be a mother and have a lovely baby daughter. Thank you, dear little trout. Thank you for your sweet and wonderful words. A short time later, the prediction came true, and a baby girl was born to the queen. The king and queen were so happy. They spent hours playing with the baby and making her laugh. They called her Rosebud because she was pink and lovely as a delicate, sweet flower. The king and queen decided to hold a great feast to celebrate the birth of the princess. They invited all their friends and neighbors and relatives and also the fairies of the kingdom to bestow their blessings upon Princess Rosebud. It was the custom for fairies to eat only from golden dishes. There were 13 fairies in the kingdom, but only 12 golden dishes. One fairy named Hepzibah was not invited. At the great feast, the walls of the ancient castle rang with merriment, music, and rejoicing. Thousands of people filled the banquet hall, which was alive with colorful banners and table decorations. Then the fairies arose, and one by one, gave Princess Rosebud their blessing. To you, my child, be beauty. To you, my child, be happiness. To you, my child, be help. To you, my child, be wisdom. To you, my child, be love. And so it went on until eleven fairies had spoken. Just before the twelfth fairy could stand up, a freezing wind whooshed through the room, blowing out many candles. The great hall echoed with the cackle of evil laughter. <laughs> Every person trembled when they all looked up and saw Hepzibah, the uninvited 13th fairy. She was dressed in long black robes, seated on a rafter at the very top of the high ceiling. She pointed a long, bony finger at Princess Rosebud's cradle. To you, my child, be a curse! In your fifteenth year, you will be wounded by the needle from a spinning wheel and fall down dead. This is my revenge, O King, for not inviting me to your party. The people below cried out for her to stop. The king jumped to his feet, face white with fear. Hepzibah, good fairy. Do not take away from us our most precious possession. My wife and I have waited for a child for so long. I am sorry. Please forgive me. No, I have waited for this feast for so long. You are too late. I have uttered my curse. Nothing can change it. You are wrong. A tall, beautiful lady at the head table jumped to her feet. I am the twelfth fairy, and I have not yet given my blessing. I cannot undo your curse, but I can soften it. Princess Rosebud shall not die, 
She shall merely sleep until she is awakened by the kiss of her true love. <laughs> we'll see about that. And Hepzibah disappeared in a puff of smoke. The banquet was thrown into an uproar. The king commanded every spinning wheel in the kingdom to be burned at once. Outside, it was night. The guests poured from the banquet hall bearing torches. They searched the entire kingdom, their torches zigzagging back and forth on the roads and alleys like giant fireflies. They seized all the spinning wheels and dragged them to the courtyard of the castle. There they burned them in a huge bonfire that reached the very top turrets. Many long years went by and Princess Rosebud grew into a lovely young lady. All the fairy's blessings came true. She had health and beauty and wisdom, and her heart poured out love for everyone, especially her parents. And they gave back love, showering her with affection. Then came the day of her 15th birthday. Her mother gave a party and invited her friends. Shall we play? Hide and seek. Rosebud, you hide first. All the children closed their eyes, and the princess ran out to hide. At the very top of an old tower, she stopped before a door that had always been locked. But today, for the first time, there was a tiny golden key in the lock. Rosebud decided to hide there. She promptly turned the key and entered. Inside, she saw a comfortable living room with a cheerful fire blazing and what looked like a kindly old lady turning a huge spinning wheel, which Rosebud had never seen before. She did not know that this was Hepzibah, the evil fairy. Hello. What is that you're doing? I am spinning, my child. What is spinning? Come here and I will show you. Rosebud let the old lady put her arm about her. When she saw the long bony fingers on her shoulder, she was frightened. Spinning is making cloth. Watch the needle go up and down, up and down, just like a goldfish darting through a pond. Do you think you could catch the fish? Try it! Rosebud reached out her hand and plucked the needle. The end of it pricked her dainty finger, and a large drop of blood appeared. At once, Rosebud fell to the ground. Then Hepzibah shook her fist. Now, O oh king, we shall see who has the greater power. This beauty shall never rise again. But Rosebud was not dead. She had only fallen into a deep sleep, as the good fairy had promised. And the king and queen and all the court fell asleep too. The horses slept in their stables. The storks slept with their heads under their wings. And the flies slept on the walls. All this made Hepzibah furious. She did not want the others to sleep. She wanted them to miss Rosebud and to grieve for her. For revenge, she encircled the castle with a large hedge, bristling with sharp thorns. Every year, the thorns grew higher and higher, thicker and thicker, till at last the entire castle was hidden, and not a single brick or chimney could be seen. After many, many long years, the castle and the Sleeping Beauty were forgotten. But then, young Prince Charles, in a land far away, heard the story and decided to look for Princess Rosebud. The twelve good fairies decided to help the prince. 
They entice the evil Hepzibah into another part of the kingdom. Prince Charles arrived at the castle, drew his sword, and cut away the thorns. He reached the main castle gate and found everybody sleeping. The prince came to the tower where Princess Rosebud lay. His heart was so filled with love that he could not resist his emotions. Oh, divine beauty, were it only my good fortune to have as my very own so beautiful a princess. But alas, you slumber in your eternal sleep. Just as he bent down to kiss the princess, Hepzibah, who had returned and was watching through a high turret window, tried to stop Prince Charles. But she slipped on the smooth stones and tumbled headlong into the tangle of thorns. Hepzibah's spell was broken. Rosebud opened her eyes and kissed Prince Charles. The king and queen and the court came to life as if nothing had happened. There was happiness everywhere. The ugly hedges of thorns were changed into beautiful plants blooming with rich flowers and the castle again became a glorious spring garden. Later, Prince Charles and Princess Rosebud were married, and they lived happily forever after.